Hello and welcome to Quartz Light, your card brochure channel. And in today's episode, the Ford Scorpio. Thank you so much for joining today. And if you're new to the channel here at Quartz Light, we look at car brochures from around the world. So if you think that might interest you, please subscribe. Anyway, back to today's episode, the Ford Scorpio. Launched at the Paris Motor Show in 1994, this time it only came as both a saloon and a state. No hatchback anymore. And for us in the UK, um, this is the first time we had the Ford Scorpio. The rest of uh, Europe, however, this was kind of like the Mark II because our Mark III Ford Granada was everyone else's Ford Scorpio. This particular one was a very much a very controversial design though and we'll certainly talk about that while we look at this brochure. And the brochure itself is from 1994 so it is an early one. And here is the brochure and really when we think about this Scorpio or the new Scorpio as it says up here it's the design which was the most controversial, the most talked about really. Looking back, I don't mind the design too bad until I look at what was um, the first generation Scorpio in Europe or the Fort Granada as we uh, called it in the UK. And yes, of course, the higher spec ones were called the Scorpio, but this essentially was the last time we saw the Granada name. Hopefully, hopefully they won't bring it back as some kind of large SUV. But you never know these days. Um, these car companies have a habit of bringing these old names back. I'm glad they dropped the name really though. I certainly would have been less happy if this was called you know, the Mark IV Granada. Anyway, I'm sure we'll talk about the design throughout it. I'm sure there'll be lots of comments of you know, I absolutely hate this design and I, to be honest with you I can understand it but me personally looking back I don't mind it as much and I sometimes feel that you know the press went to town talking about the design and how much they hated it. I wonder how much that really uh, affected people's views. Um, be nice just to go back and just look at the car before anyone commented on it. Anyway first of all this particular car um, has my favourite colour on it or one of my favourite Ford colours, this dark aubergine, a very nice attractive colour isn't it. Anyway let's open the brochure up and see what's inside. And then as we open the page up we get another shot of the Scorpion, probably the a lesser attractive angle, it's probably the, the front view look like that, head on front view is probably the design point I really struggle with the most, again in this rather nice colour. Overall though, um, essentially under the skin um, it was largely the same floor plan as that Mark III Granada and the engines were generally the same as well, it's just these design cues which were radically different very much a sort of American look and uh, like I say very controversial in fact um, often on this channel we talk about who designed which car as far as I know we never really found out who was the designer of this car I don't think Ford ever released that and, and Ford even always stuck up to this design said it was a fabulous design and you know they got the sales that they wanted to get I don't know how true that was because it wasn't really a sales success. I think the real winner was if you bought one of these second hand because you know the price is really affected. If you bought one of these second hand you got quite the car really didn't you and you know you could have had the Cosworth engine in there. And then on the opposite side it gives you know the new Scorpio and the three trim levels executive being the base model, gear being your mid-level and Ultima being your top of the range. You get any engine in any uh, trim level as far as I can see which was very nice and even the executive was actually well trimmed for the price so it was quite a competitively priced car. 
Although ultimately, you know, it, what it lasted from ninety four to ninety eight, very short life. Life, um, really, a ninety seven. The last year they tried to change it a little bit, but anyway, we'll come to that in a, in a moment. But overall, it wasn't a success. Ford, kind of like I said, was, there's no market for these big cars. Nothing to do with the design, of course. Just no. It's come to the end of its life, um, and kind of like gave up. Um, because you know the sales success were all the big German cars or maybe a big Swede if you wanted something different but that's the way Ford looked at it and of course Ford have kind of like moved away from cars themselves and just looked at SUVs now aren't they in this sort of like text here so it's giving some little bits of key points a little bit random sentences really a new sensation in style with the arrival of the Scorpio the way ahead for luxury motoring is clearly charted sleek curves culminating in flowing body contours that perfectly complement the spacious luxurious interior innovative safety and convenient features are intelligently blended to create a car that stands out from the crowd and transports you to another world yeah, it did stand up from the crowd really, but not in the way that really Ford wanted it to do. Quite a nice brush this one, it's even got a little bit of a key of content like a book. Anyway, let's move on. It then turns into this rather nice and it's a very sort of long, very long sort of page. Opens up showing a nice image of this Scorpio from this angle. I can kind of like forgive it, I think it looks quite... I'm not going to go wild and say attractive, but it looks quite nice in this particular sort of looking down kind of like shot that we have here. This particular one is the Ultima, again in this nice aubergine colour. There is a colour chart at the end that we'll have a look at. When you looked at the three different models though, very hard to tell them apart really. I think the key to telling the difference was really the wheel trims. Um, on the base model and then these alloys on the top two models and a different alloy which we'll have a look at and compare in a moment but overall from the outside very difficult to tell the trim levels because you know the base model was well equipped so it got you know color coded door mirrors etc etc and these sort of chrome handles um, so very difficult to tell from the outside particularly the early ones and this is the early one quite simply just saying Scorpio here it's probably let's try and zoom in a little bit on that I think just saying Scorpio um, and then you found on the later models they actually put the trim level here with the Scorpio so you either had you know a gear badge or Scorpio Ultima although the base model still never got a badge on there but really they started putting the trim levels there but on the early ones like I say it does said the word Scorpio these alloy wheels unique to this one unique to the Ultima the top of the range model and we'll compare that in a moment text again a little bit random classic and distinctive looks combined with highly responsive performance and here smoothly contoured bumpers with integrated indicator and fog lights add to the Ultima's appeal this particular shot of this top of the range one is probably quite a good time to actually look at how they kind of like try to tone down that front end a bit by darkening the headlamp so we'll just put a little bit of a picture of um, kind of like how they tried to just change it slightly in its last year so you can see how they tried to subtly sort of darken them headlamps to you know, like tone down that sort of a bit of a goofy look um, not that it really did a great deal really did it anyway let's move on and as we said at the start you can also get it as an estate and this time it's a very nice green color this particular one is actually the um, gear I do believe um, now the gear different alloy wheels you can see I quite like the alloy wheels on the gear actually um, but when you look sort of like from there you can just see granada because you know typical ford and many manufacturers actually 
the, the, they were always a little bit lazy with the estate so the rear end of this just looked like a Granada so if you really hated the rear end of the Scorpio and you much preferred your Granada you could have it as a an estate of course quite simply saying the gear estate combines luxury with purpose and safe secure and easy to access luggage space next page is showing this nice interior shot and probably the most attractive part of the Scorpio very nice functional big interior space and I guess if you were one of those clever buyers who got a bit of a bargain on the second-hand market this is the view you had really wasn't it you would if you actually owned the car that's the view you have most of the time so if you enjoy driving it then you know fair play you know it was a good car and it was quite a well-built car to be fair and a little bit old-fashioned by this stage because under the skin it wasn't really updated too much um, but like I say you got a lot of car for your money you would never complain about this brochure being too wordy the words just say entertainment at the touch of a button and then on the opposite side foresighted ergonomics with clear instrument display and then more glimpses of the inside so that looks particularly nice seats in this high spec model and again you know you can't really complain too much about that large interior space or as it says in Ford terms sleek stylish and luxurious interior and spacious deeply contoured seating ensures passenger comfort front and rear the brochure then continues having a look in this interior and this sort of fake wood i'm not sure if i like that or not but there it is um, but we'll have a look at some of these key features so a scuff plate on all models durable stainless steel scuff plates provide an effective method of protecting the body and interior remote control for in-car entertainment all models remote control mounted on the steering column allows the audio system to be adjusted safely without taking your hands off the wheel and will become standard on all models during January 1995 so I guess the very early ones didn't have that and then CFC free air conditioning standard on the Ultima and available as an option on other models is a new automatic temperature control system with independent left and right control more interior shots yeah they do seem to be favoring the interior shots maybe because that's the most attractive part of the design I'm not sure um, and again on the next page we get some little images let's have a look at those so we've got memory function ultima electric seating can be programmed so there are three predetermined positions can be stored and returned to at the touch of a button headlight jet wash option concealed high pressure telescopic jet system ensures headlamps give optimum performance there's also the uh, electro chromatic rear view mirror on the top model the ultima the mirror operates by continuously sensing the intensity of light etc etc uh, fuel computer on the gear and the ultima and we've also got remote control central double locking on all models and then we get this rather nice picture comparing the estates and the three models so at the top here we have the base model um, the executive and for the first time we can see the executive just has these wheel coverings we then have the gear I mean the gear is actually my favorite alloy and then the Ultima with this different alloy and like you can see from the three pictures other than the wheel choices it's hard to determine um, one from each other so you know you quite simply could put the Ultima wheels on your base model and it looked like a top of the range model really didn't it you know even coming with things you even got the roof bars and the colour coded door mirrors on the base model um, and of, or of course we can also see that sort of you know 
Granada rear end on these as well. Anyway, let's have a look at some of these images. Actually, I kind of like lied a bit, didn't I? I couldn't resist the zooming in on that base model's wheel trim there. And then if we compare that to the other two, the gears alloy wheel and the range topping Ultimas. The text here is simply reading, adding to the experience, the Ultima gear and executive estates offer a combination of luxury mortaring, mortaring with spacious load carrying ability. And indeed they did. So quite a big practical um, car, similar to, you know, your Granada, of course. Here it's showing a dog guard. Tonneau cover. Sixty forty split rear seats, and it also shows at the end here, and then folding rear seats, making a very big load space. The text simply saying the spacious, uncluttered luggage area and clamshell rear door making loading and unloading trouble free. So, a question I always hear: What does the executive estate owner? carry around in his executive estate well golf clubs of course a golf umbrella what else oh maybe some fine luggage he going away on a weekend i guess or she and then if that's not executive enough why not cart around your grandfather clock even if you have just got the saloon model. Then you've got your obligatory uh, drive through the countryside. Not sure where this is, maybe Yorkshire Dales? I don't know. Answers in the comments. Down the bottom here, it's telling us effortless cruising on the open road and Standard anti-lock brakes for peace of mind. Another image of the rear of this Scorpio estate. Tell by the alloys, it's the Ultima now. No, oh, we've learned something. And then we've also got this little image in the countryside again. Scorpio Ultima revised front and rear suspension provides outstanding road holding. Oh, kind of like almost looks out of place in that with that sort of American styling in the countryside I think and then we start looking at the engines here it's showing us this particular one's got the Cosworth powered unit gives us a little bit of a technical information on the next page with you know performance figures etc so let's start looking at the technical specs so here we have the engine choices so your 2 litre 8 valve your 2 litre 16 valve your 2.9 12 valve and that 2.9 injection 24 valve Cosworth. Often forgotten, there is also a 2.5 litre turbo diesel available as well. So if you look at some of these figures here, um, here it's giving you sort of performance figures. Nice little look and the performance and also that fuel economy as well. Obviously the Turbo diesels point out a few more miles per gallon, of course. Although, I guess the interesting thing or something that you know shot out to me was this: you really wanted this, didn't you? The 2.9 injection 24 valve Cosworth performance 140 miles per hour, not 16 8.5. So you know, a pretty fast car. The only problem, really, or the, the only sad thing was. Um, as it says there, you could only get the Cosworth as an automatic, but a nice option nevertheless. I think actually most Scorpios were sold as automatics anyway. 
maps and the specification. I'm not going to read it all, but I will point a few things out along as we go. As you can see, along here, the three models, the Executive, Gear and Ultima, we can see um, you could even have your base Executive with that uh, 2.9 injection Cosworth engine, but it looks like um, the very base 2 liter 8 valve was only available on the Executive, but you did have the choice of having other engines, which was nice. A similar story with the estates. And then we get to the technical information. Um, black dot, of course, meaning, you know, you, you it's standard equipment. And sort of safety and security. I did at one time actually start playing music as I went through these technical specifications. Somebody then turned and said, I hate that music and I stopped doing it, but anyone wants that music to return please mention that in the comments if there is enough interest we'll start the music again more equipment here safety and security features exterior features A continuation of exterior features and of course you can always pause this screen at any time you want to have a look at anything in any great detail nice in-car entertainment choice and then we've got instruments and controls and then seats and seat belts and this is a bit of a strange thing I've never heard of, the rear side window shatter detector. I would imagine if the rear side window breaks you would know about it, but it looks like you've got the option of some kind of like shatter detection, which is very unusual. Seats and seat belts continued. Comfort and convenience. Yeah, and there it does talk about that windows electrically operated rear windows with global operation looks like something a little bit fancy and the luggage compartment specifications all the same on each model there the next page it tells us there's another option another uh, alloy wheel option there that you could have as well back page and this very sort of shiny uh, page I guess this is a good place where we can have a look at um, how they change the rear as well we haven't had too much of, of a look of the rear of the Scorpio it was another area of contention although I didn't mind the rear to be honest with you it was always the front that I was in two minds about but a lot of people said they didn't like the rear either so they kind of like changed this chrome strip and made this light appear a little bit bigger so we should compare that I think okay so I've just put on top there the uh, the other rear of the more modern one the 97 the same time they darken the front light they change this rear light to make it look a little bit less bulbous so there you go that's just to compare and then that brings us to the interiors um, and also this particular phone as well a forged phone you could get you couldn't be an executive without that could you then we get to the interior colors so there's your interior colors there for the seats um, and also the levers two different colors pumice and raven and it's also got something called a partial raven leather trim a uh, particular pack you could get look at those seats they really do like the the very much um, body hugging seats them um, says this pack is optional on the executive and the gear oh, very nice something a little bit different anyway let's have a look at the exterior colors so that's our wide color choice and what a great color choice it is unusual to find such a wide color range today of course um 
I think we should zoom in. It's hard to make them out on screen, but um, they are particularly nice colours. There's that dark aubergine, you know, it's quite hard to make out the colours really on there. Really attractive range of colours. That's actually green. Um, it's very hard to make out on screen, unfortunately. Another green, a red. Ontario blue, a marine, and that state blue. And then at the bottom there, it kind of like shows you, um, you know, what you could get in the way of you know your seat. So if it's a P, it's Pummies or Raven or RP, you get a choice of interior colour. Just um, show people this as well. I know there's some people like myself who are just as interested in the car brochures as the car themselves, but you know, there's your publication number and the date, December 1994. So that comes to the end of today's episode for Ford Friday and the Ford Scorpio. As always, please do comment uh, your opinions of the Scorpio. I'm sure those looks are going to come into that somewhere along there. Um, I'd also like to say thank you so much for your time today. I do appreciate you spending your time watching these episodes. It's very much appreciated. For those who haven't already, please do subscribe and like as you will to each particular episode but for now we'll say uh, thank you so much for watching uh, don't forget tomorrow's Saturday special um, where we'll have a little bit more um, I think mean, we've got another couple of little tiny brochures for the Scorpio we might have a look at but anyway for now we'll say thank you so much take care and goodbye the new Scorpio it's another world <laughs>